just look at the state of you. You're more of a wreck than this place. Is this what you call taking better care of yourself? No more excuses, your ladyship. I order you to rest. <sighs> Fine. I'll rest. Don't worry, Gav. She's in good hands. But we should have never let her fall into Hugo's. Back when he had some like. The question is, where is he now? And what the hell were those wireless doing there? Hmm. I was wondering about that all the way home. Otto may have heard something. I'll talk to him. And I'll talk to Tomes. The lawsman? About what? About your faithful hound for a start. If any four-legged friend's ever done that before, I'm betting Tomes will have read about it. But what I want to know is, what happens afterwards? It's all well and good Toggle saving our asses, but if it costs him what it costs Jill... Right. Let me know if you learn anything. Will do. And you do the same, eh? Jill. Listen to Taya. I will. Thank you. Otter, is now a good time? It's not a bad one. How's Jill doing? Ah, oh, she's been better. Ty is making sure she gets the rest she needs. Good. Any word on Kupka's movements? Vivian's doing what she can to try and track him, but she's feeding on scraps. We've sent owls out to the Curse Breakers and our other friends in the West, asking them to keep their eyes peeled for anything unusual. No leads yet. But it's only a matter of time. All right. Let me know when you find something. There he is. All right, Clive. Still busy saving the world. Mid. When did you get back? Mm, just now. What about your studies? Adjourned. Since Hugo Kupka invaded Rosaria. All the canvas in uproar about it. He's gone mad. He's turned rogue. It'll be us next. You try concentrating with all of that. All right, all right. You win. 
How long will you be staying this time? Dunno. A while, most likely. Any road, while I'm here, I was hoping you could do us a favor. Mid. You can't just expect me to... Please, oblige her. <sighs> while we are busy tracking down Kupka, you should have a little time to spare. Professor! Now there's a face I haven't seen in a while. Shouldn't you have it buried in a dusty old tome? <laughs> I did, till a familiar trill pricked my ears. As ever, your exuberance is a breath of fresh air, which successfully scattered the painstakingly assembled fragments of my thoughts. I'll take that as a compliment. Well, Clive, you heard the professor. So, I'll meet you in the storeroom when you're done. Wait, hold on! Breath of fresh air? Bloody tempest, more like. Oi, Otto, you got my gill. Huh? What are you on about? My fee for bringing Mid across. She said you were paying. That little... The storeroom, was it? I wonder what Mid's plotting. Here for another of my lectures. We met under curious circumstances. Naturally. Still, don't let me keep you. The little ones have been up to their old tricks. Jill looked white as a sheet. Why soldiers with their ruby stain? Stick steeds fed to the fire. Shall never burn away the pain. Till one man tops the pile. Ivan's newest dish is a masterpiece. Once you get over the urge to gag, that is. Tome says he's looking for books about Torgal. I know. Let's write one. How good it is to see you, Clive. From the moment of her very first steps. And so... As to why she has stayed away... Did you know? But once they had... Until it was taken away... I have a few new notes that might interest you. You wish to study the tomes? When we find out anything about Torgal, you'll be the first to know.
And what can I do for you? Go on, then. You'll not find a better price than that. It'd better all be here. See, there's nothing to fear for me. Jill looked white as a sheet when they brought her back. Here. What's Come on, man? Otto. Blackthorn may be the manliest of men, but he does lack a certain tenderness. Goots, meanwhile, is as burly as a behemoth, but as innocent as a babe in arms. Shouldn't you be getting some rest soon? You took your time. I'm a busy man. I'll get to the point then. I want to turn the room down there into a workshop, like the one I had at Dad's place. Miss, you've only just come back. And? I've been thinking of... Dad said I had a knack for engineering. Told me everything he knew about it. Then sent me off to Canva to learn everything he didn't. That was his dream for me. That one day I'd put my studies to... But I'm helping no one stuck at school. I've studied enough. It's time I put me knack to... I know that I can help the people here. And I want... Well, well, well. All right. <laughs> Which is why I wrote up a list of jobs for you. For me? Who else? <sighs> first things first, I need equipment and materials. There's the design to the stuff I need and the stuff it needs smithing. The other materials I can work myself. Just need a generous benefactor to lay them on for me. Apart from the wood. I'll need a carpenter for that, but I can just borrow yours. Is that everything? For now. I'll let you know if I need out, El. Let's start. Materials and tools. That means Karen and Blackthorn. Sid's gonna chop off Kupka's head this time. You were born in Rosalith, weren't you? How's it coming along? Blackthorn. What's it look like? I have a commission. She requires certain. Do you think you can make them? Bloody hell. What's she planning to build? Mm. I'll see what I can do. Till I bring up my thanks. Was wondering where you got meds back from Canva. Just now. She's planning to set up a workshop in the store. Here's the list. Think you can find this lot? <laughs> Won't be much of it. Excellent. As for payment. It's paid. Hundred times over by what that girl's done for us. If it weren't for her filters, we'd have nought to drink but blight water. And that would have drained the life out of us longer. Indeed it would. I'll send the stuff on to Mid when it comes. Thank you. That just leaves the carpenter. Let's see if Bardolph's available.
Jill looked white as a sheet. <laughs> Do you with a good oil in this, kid? Should be enough to... How do, Master Sid? Bard off. Mid's looking to build a workshop in the storeroom, and she needs the aid of a skilled carpenter. So naturally I thought of you. Well, I'd love to help the young miss however I can. But I'm afraid I got my hands full just keeping this place afloat. There's holes need patching, and if I'd gladly spare Mid all the time I have, but as that... <sighs> it don't have to be me, though, does it? What about that other fella? You know, the one over at Martha's rest. That's right. I'll ask Martha if she can spare him. <laughs> Clive, what brings you to... Our uh, home finds itself in need of an extra carpenter. I don't mind if he don't. We're all friends. Thank you, Martha. He went up to Cressida on business. As far as I know, he's still there. I'll look for him there, then. If it ain't the lad who saved my life, what brings you to a place like this? You do, Bernard. Martha said I might find you here. I have a proposition for you. Oh, do you know? Building a workshop, you say? Well, that beats tacking boards to bridges, sure enough. And if Martha didn't mind me being gone a while, then neither do I. You just tell me where you want me. <laughs> That's the spirit. I, uh, I couldn't ask a favor, though, could I, before we go? Of course. Well, that there is Cressida, where I grew up. Ain't much left of it now, though. Except my parents' graves. But I, I came up here hoping to visit her. I even patched up the bridge to get across. Only to find the place crawling with fiends. But you're a dab hand when it comes to dealing with beasts. It's the least I can do. Well, thank you.
This shouldn't take long. should do it. <laughs> you made short work of that. Thank you, son. Now my folks can rest in peace once more. Huh? Oh, people started packing their things after the duchy fell. Between the Blight and the Imperials, you just couldn't... Must be nigh on a decade since the last wagon left. Oh, it may as well have been a century, looking at the place. I'm sorry. Ah, don't be. Can't live in the past. Soon as I'm done saying a prayer for those that raised me, it's on to your heart. I'll meet you there. Don't you take care of Mid's little list? Then head back before she thinks of anything else.
Blackthorn may be the manliest of men. Shouldn't you be getting some rest here? All right, Clive? You I am. I've placed your various orders, and a carpenter. That's brilliant. Is there... Nope. Blackthorn and Lady Karen have already sent over everything I asked for, and I've got all my plans drawn up. So as soon as Bernard gets here, we can get to work. <laughs> I can't wait. That's my good deed for the day done. Let's see how Jill's faring. Did Bernard say how long he was going to be? I mean, it's fine, but I hope he comes soon. Good to see you, Sid. Lovely weather, isn't it? I feel like all the gods in the heavens are smiling down on us. I hear your scout made quite a hero of himself over in Rosalith, sniffing out a score of terrified townspeople and ushering them to safety. Or so he claims. I hear your scout made quite a hero of himself over in Rosalith. Jill. Recovering, but she still needs her rest. Of course. Take good care of her, won't you? I'll do my best. Oh, Gav was looking for you. He said he had something to show you in the shelves. The shelves? Oh, that's right. He went to ask Hippocrates about Torgor. He must have found something. You have the look of a man with the twins upon his shoulders, Rodrigo. Talia has tasked me with removing a curse breaker's brand. I don't think I can... I'm afraid of what happens if I fail. You survived, I know, but is it really worth the risk? You don't need me to answer that. You know full... I hope as much as you that one day bearers can walk among others as equals. And we must lift that burden. The operation may be dangerous. But it's also essential. I know. I still wish there was some other way. But griping about my lot helps. I know you will. Unfortunately, the first thing that he's doing is the preparation. Something I can't do with the infirmary's ammonia supply so low. What few leaves would... Just tell me what you need. You... you'll go. Oh. No one knows her blood like Tyre, and she swears by ammonia for easing pain. It's simple enough to find, and fortunately for you, I do. Along the river near the village of Amber over in Rosaria. What's everyone whispering about? Do you have a moment, Sid? A team of curse breakers has gone... Which team? Coles. They were sent to liberate a carriage of bearers before they could be smuggled to... They were moving in for their assault when the carriage was attacked. A curse breaker managed to release a stolas amid the confusion, but... They should be back by now, but I've heard nothing from any... I can't help but worry. They know the work is dangerous. But what if I've got them all killed? Before they go out, I always remind them why we're doing this, what they escaped. But I never really thought how my words might affect them. 
what risks they might take because of the things I've... I'll go and find them. We'll both rest easier now. Thank you, Sid. And I'm sorry. The plan was to intercept the slaver somewhere in the Dragon's Airy. I can't tell That should be enough to go on. If they were there, Torgo will track them down. Jill looked white as a sheet when they came to them. Clive, where have you been? I've been wanting to ask you something about Torg. Where did you get him? Like, in the first place? Uh, my father brought him back from one of his expeditions into the Northern Territories. They were crossing a snowfield when they heard his cries, and... Well, seeing no sign of his pack, they took him in. What do you reckon, Tomes? It certainly adds weight to the theory. Clive, I believe that Torgal may be no mere hound, but a rare frost wolf, an animal native to the far northern reaches of Valisthea. In one of our oldest bestiaries, I found reference to a frost wolf who served as guardian to an ancient queen of the north. Such was his mastery over ether, he could cast magics on command. His name was Fenrir. Fenrir the Frostwolf. Now, the annals do not state it explicitly, but I have reason to believe this queen was a dominant of Shiva, a girl from the Northern Territories and her faithful hound. One awakens as the dominant of Shiva, and the other... You're saying that Jill granted Torgal his powers. What? Just like Fenrir. People called him my hound, but Torgal and Jill were inseparable. He grew up as a faithful companion to the dominant of Shiva, and years later, his powers awakened. Just when his master needed him the most. You're right! If it weren't for Torgal blasting those bastards to kingdom come, Jill would have been for it. Quite. Though Torgal's power is his own. His latent birthright as a Frostwolf. It had only to be unlocked. Oh, get you, Torgal. <laughs> You're an even finer hound than we thought. <laughs> and regarding your original concern, you need not fear for Torgal's health. Why, the beast has the appetite of a behemoth. Just this very morn, I found him with his nose buried in my nuts. There you are! I've been looking everywhere for you. Bernard's here. I need you to introduce us so we can get to work. <sighs> I shall be a moment. Everyone else, but I promise I'll pay you back. I'm gonna work my fingers to the bone for you lot, starting right now. Just you wait. I'll make wonders like this world's never seen. Then I look forward to seeing them. Now that that's settled, I wonder if Vivian's made any progress tracking down Kupka. Well, let me do this, Clive. I'll pay you back, I promise. We have everything we need to begin work in earnest. And work in earnest we shall! <laughs> 
Thanks for before, son. That was a good deed you did me. Only right I do you one in return. Though I did wonder if I'd bit off more than I could chew when Mid showed me her plans for the place. If she hadn't been there to tell me what to do, I wouldn't have known where to start. <sighs> I wish Miss Midador would let us help her with her dungeoneering. I wonder what she's going to dungeon in next. Let's go and ask her. I think I'll wait till it's away and stay the tour with me. Blackthorn may be the manliest of men, but it does lack a certain How goes the hunt for Kupka? Largely in circles. We have myriad sightings of strange soldiers in unexpected places, but nothing definitive as yet. If only we knew for certain by what route he left. Well, if anyone can piece this puzzle together, it's you. And I'm willing. What? Would that be a problem? Do you know, Clive? I believe it a mercy that you didn't inherit your father's throne. Your poor people would surely live in fear of you. You have nothing to worry about on that front. I won't be claiming his crown. <laughs> uh, Clive, have you got a minute? We, um, have a guest. A guest? For your trouble. It was a pleasure, in hindsight. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Byron? Clive, my boy! Tap a cask and stoke the ovens for your favorite uncle is here! <laughs> The Dalmechian government sues for peace. How shall we respond? If they're willing to accept their fault in the matter, I see no reason to refuse them. Still, we must insist on substantial reparations. The twin side stores are not as bottomless as reported. Aye, and we have many more mouths to feed. We shall just have to have the Dalmechs empty their treasuries for us. Of course, none of this would have been possible without your timely intervention, Prince Olivier. Indeed, I doubt any of us would have had the courage to trade words with the mighty Titan, nor less the wit to win him over. The Empire owes you a great debt. May the blessing of the crystals go with you, Your Highness. May the blessing of the crystals go with you. Very good. Now, let us come to the question of precisely when the Dalmechs will withdraw their troops. Dion's fire could rid us of them in mere moments. The men of the Fist will not withdraw until a peace treaty is concluded. So let us keep the negotiations open, give them time to gather what gold and trinkets they can, and once they deliver that which we demand, what worth is a piece of parchment? Your Radiance, were Prince Dion to take the field, the enemy would surely send their own dominant to meet him. 
And while his highness would of course prevail, there would be heavy losses on both. You need not fear Hugo Kupka. He is engaged on the Western Front. Even were the Dalmex to send for him, he would not arrive in time. As much as I would enjoy witnessing a clash between Bahamut and Titan, it is not to be. And what of your subjects, your Radiance? If the fighting spread to the city proper, the people would bear the brunt of it. There will be losses, it is true. Yet for every citizen who falls, another can be bred. For every home that burns, another can be built. The Empire will live on. Dion? Yes, sir. Prepare for battle. But, sire... Do not make me repeat myself. Return to your camp, and await my orders. If that is your wish, your Radiance, I shall depart at once. Do the astrologers augur? The stars are in agreement, your radiance. The shadow of treachery hangs over Prince Dion. So Annabella's tales were true. You disappoint me, Dion. What is Uncle Byron doing here? Only one way to find out. The little ones have been up to their old tricks. It's just one thing after another around here. Never thought I'd see the day, Lord Byron Rosfield of the Seven High Houses came to tea. Ah, my dear nephew, how I've missed you. <laughs> how did you find this place, Uncle? Through the good offices of young Sir Wade. He really is the most helpful fellow. As are you, I hear. The Guardians and those they freed tell the most outlandish tales of your heroics in Rosalith. Which is why I came, to learn the full truth of the matter. 
sort the fact from the fiction, so to speak. You were working with the Guardians of the Flame to evacuate the people of Rosaletta Portisolda. I was. I. Then I have questions for you. Please, come inside, Uncle. Gladly. Uh, you there? There are 2,000 gold talents in those chests. See that they're added to my nephew's coffers, would you? 2,000? And I'm afraid that is all I know. A fleet sailing south past Port Isolde. Most intriguing. Forgive me for not being able to tell you more. I hadn't the faintest idea Coco withdrew wounded from Rosalith. Still less that my own nephew dealt the decisive blow. What do you think, Vivian? I think, with this news of the Dalmechian fleet and recent reports of the Royalists' movements, that the final piece of the puzzle has fallen into place. Come here and I'll show you. It is known that Kupka's forces entered Rosaria via its unguarded coast. So can the same be said of your visitors from Wulud? Certainly her royal navy is famed for the efficiency with which it bears her knights from one battlefield to the next. And in the Ein Heyar, or Black Galleon, she boasts a vessel nigh as swift and every bit as feared as the kingdom's legendary cavalry. A fitting flagship for a land apart, her naval presence being crucial to her ambitions beyond Ash. Yes, it seems safe to assume that the Royalists did indeed enter Rosaria from the sea. So then, had you a vested interest in Titan's survival, whither would you take him? Why home to Drake's Fang, a place rich enough in ether to conjure the magics needed to mend his hurts? But would that not entail an arduous voyage around the Southern Cape? Let us say that the Royalists did put ashore with a mind to spirit Kupka away from under your very nose. Could that truly have been their plan for him? To load him aboard one of the ships flying Republican colors sighted off the coast near Port Isolde. To spend weeks at sea, being tossed hither and yon by unforgiving waves, his life hanging in the balance. No. The journey would mean Titan's death, and Kupka's faithful creatures would not allow it. So what then was the plan of our Waluda friends? Reports suggest they made not for the coast, but for the desert. And by cutting through the Velcroy, a party traveling light would have Titan back in his bed days before a galley could lurch into port. To wit, it was the Royalists not the Republicans who effected Hugo Kupka's safe retreat. I would stake your life on it. So it was the Waluders who spirited the wretch away. Now I think about it, there was something a little strange about the ships I saw. The men seemed almost crestfallen, as if in mourning, as if they believed, or were made to believe, that their master was dead. <laughs> you have a keen mind, Lord Rosfield, and you have your answer. To find Kupka, you have merely to follow the Royalist trail across the Velcroy. It may well have gone cold by now, but as they say in the Republic, all roads lead to Drake's Fang. Uh, allow me to accompany you part of the way. As luck would have it, I had intended to journey Camberwood on business after visiting you here. The Fang would be but a short detour. I'd be glad of the company. Give me a moment to make ready. I need to tell my friends what we've learned. And where we're going. Very well, but be quick about it, my boy. Time waits for no man.
Mid's finished outfitting her little workshop, I hear. With a little help from Sid, of course. Of course. Our new leader's no better at resisting her wheedling than the old one was. <laughs>